Very, very musical. I think you really got into the spirit of it very well. It sounds very stylish, I think, very elegant playing in many ways. So you've done a lot of good work. What I, what I really want to feel is this kind of um, uh, uh, light delicacy, shimmering sound, as though you're just throw, you know, effortlessly managing the pianism. And I think a much lighter quality, uh, so, you know, which would be terrific to get. And I think what could help um, is if you try to practice in little units at a time, you know, I mean, even just, I mean, so I'm, I'm going to buy 100 pounds piano and the shed at the bottom of the garden, but I mean, that's a, that's sort of, I'm not thinking of every note. I'm just thinking about one note. So, I mean, yeah, that, that would, so, yeah, that would be terrific. So, that's right that's right and, and so you know i mean that's it so trying to get a diminuendo uh, through the four notes and just feeling that it's just one kind of one kind of impulse for it all so it's sort of throwing it off yeah that would be terrific and um, from the beginning in the left hand you know that this fifth finger if you just play the c sharp it's a very good kind of um you know, health health check if you like. Hold on to the fifth finger and you know make sure that it's really firm in the fingertip, but everything behind it, loosen your arm, loosen the wrist, loosen the nut you know, even the don't grip the knuckles even. Just think that, you know, it's the tip of my finger that's I mean, this is piano practice, putting my fifth finger on my other hand and just going like this and making sure that I'm not rigidly locked, you know, and going around like, you know, just absolutely free as possible, up and down, you know, round and round, up the circles, all that sort of, but, you know, having that sense of connecting. There's a kind of tyranny about legato and piano playing, and we were all brought up. I was brought up this way, hundreds of others, that we've got to overlap and dig into the keys and cre the, the trouble with that is it creates such heaviness and tension and and you know an impromptu like this which is being thrown off like quasi improvisation and that you know Chopin is not about heavy it's not sort of you know black forest gatto with double cream and you know stodge it's it's very much much more souffle-esque and kind of you know light and kind of sorbet like isn't it much more delicate so i wouldn't actually with the other notes and um, i would use the pedal but i wouldn't dig into the keys you know see if you can try so you've got to show two different approaches you've got a much deeper fifth finger approach and have a try at that, and then the, the, the rest of the left hand is much lighter, almost, and dare I say, in the pedal staccato, you know. Yeah. Okay. Have a try. That's right. I mean, there's a bit of a cultural difference here. I mean, you must and you must know about this if you're going to play Chopin, I think. Uh, and in America, um, there's a long tradition since 1945, at least, of pianists not doing um, thick overlapping legato. And it used to really annoy me, you know, when I was younger, I used, because I was brought up in this European tradition of, you know, you, you kind of play like an organ, you overlap you know, every note. And there's still an awful lot of piano teachers get very angry when, they, when their pupils don't do that in every single context imaginable. So I apologize about upsetting people, but I think it's up to you. You know, it's good to discuss this in this piece. And I, I'm in my old age, I'm becoming much more American. Um, you know, and it's interesting. I mean, a student of mine's just gone to the Juilliard and he was told there by, by a very famous teacher that you should never actually do that at all between notes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far, but it, it was sort of reinforcing this kind of Atlantic gulf in piano playing that's always been there. Um, that, uh, you know, and so many pianists do this overlapping in Europe and so many don't do it and yet they're able to make it sound legato that's the point the second theme if you go to the um, bar 15 mm -hmm. that's yeah. slightly different now here 
you know, I think it's very good to have as an anchor this beautiful thumb melody. So again, can you relax, you know, and do a kind of anti-clockwise movement from your elbow? Just connect. I mean, I was just thinking just to play the thumb with the left hand, first of all. Can you try that? This idea of ripples of notes, you know. So if you can imagine that, you know, that you're throwing a little pebble into the water and this is the ripple coming out of the thumb note, that would be terrific. And again, not thinking about every note so much, but, you know, practicing it. Again, it's the feeling that, you know, it's not four notes I'm playing, it's just one thumb note. And out of that, you know, these other notes are coming. So it's a little bit like diving down again, but you want, but just feeling that it's just the thumb. And eventually you, you want to feel that you can get kind of two bars, two bars in one impulse. It's the same feeling. You're not kind of, you're don't bump, bump. You're not doing that. Have you been practicing C sharp minor scale triplets in the left hand and quadruplets in the right hand? No, I have to admit I haven't, but that would be a very good exercise. I think it's excellent to do that. You know, I mean, da 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 da. I, I would always, I always get students to do that. But I mean, presumably you do it on one note, don't you? Bum 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 bum. Yeah. yeah. So that's one thing, but it's not enough really. I think you need to do that, you know, at over four octaves. And for the middle section, I mean, you know, you're you're correct. The the threes against twos um, can be even more um, natural. Ya yeah, da 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 da. Yes, yeah, so again, I would be practicing um, D flat major scale and doing it with threes in one hand and twos in the other, then reversing it. I'm just thinking for the, you know, the upbeat, the end of bar, you know, bar 43, you know, the twos against threes there, then it comes all over the place. It's the, it's the first bar of the melody of the trio. So, you know, it's not enough to just, you know, be able to do it in one note. You've got to be able to try and play, you know, three against two all the way through. That's terrific. And then the other thing that's, that's really important, I think, um, is, is practicing, jump practicing in the left hand. This is a bit further, so I'm jumping about a bit now. But if, right at the end, that when you've got these octaves, you see, bar 115, you know, so, I mean, that low G sharp, you know, it's very tempting to be very heavy in that. But in a sense, it's a kind of like a, a rebound off it. Yum, bum, bum. And it's kind of much more delicate. We're not playing the Brahms B flat concerto. It's much more um, uh, airborne music, you know. So could you just try to put the pedal down at about 115 mm -hmm. and take the G sharp out of the piano like that? Yeah. Bum, like this. That's it. Good. That's it. Yes. That's it. And if we can feel that there's, you know, no kind of weight on that low G sharp. Yeah. Do you want to just try from 113 to the end? Uh, so I would, I would practice, kind of, I would practice getting right up as dumb as soon as you can. So feel that coming off the G sharp is part of jumping to the next note. Yeah. But so I think you know you've done great initial work, and now I think searching for this kind of magical lightness of touch and doing it by dives at the piano and taking lots of notes in one impulse will be great for you. So well done.
I think this will be really excellent. I think you've made a wonderful stab at it indeed. You know, it's, it's well on the way. Very good. I mean, what I would say, this is a unique one, double variation form. I want much, much more contrast in character and motivation and approach between the F minor sections and the F major sections. Mm. Um, I think that uh, you could really be totally different. Rob, take it from the beginning of the F major, which is bar 30, is it? Yes, OK. A, I mean, that's a, I mean, yeah, even more silly, if you want. I mean, even come, come fast. I mean, yep, but come right off the piano. You know, if you can stay really close in the F minor and intense, and then you know, jumping about, you know, okay. having having you know much more, um, you know, um, tomfoolery as it were, you know, silliness basically, you know, have a try. Awesome. And if you can try, I mean, finishing. Yeah, much more off the piano. Yeah, much less effort. Yeah, if I go. Good. So, yeah, less pedal, of course, as well. You know, just, you know, taking time, you know, I mean, you could use a little bit of a pedal and all these sort of things. All that kind of stuff, that's fine, but we don't want to be aware of it, you know, you know, you don't need to. Then we get into the F minor. So again, go back again to bringing out, make it like a three part um, uh, contrapuntal piece. Imagine, and you know, can you make the um, the sports Sandy in bar 52, the third bar of the F minor variation one? Don't do them by making them louder. Do them by delaying them. Do Can you do them by being quieter on them? Okay, yeah. Have a try, yeah. Right. Good. Now, that's about, now, I just always keep. The second note softer. Yeah. Have a go. promising indeed and I'm, I'm sure that'll be a very powerful um, performance. Well, well underway, getting a lot of the enthusiasm and a lot of the flair necessary. I mean, the big thing that will help you is if you could actually conduct the whole thing. You know, you know, can can you just sort of sing it and just kind of wave your arms like this around? And I mean, dee da da dee da. I would actually be using, you know, doing it in in four. Da dum da 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 dee da. Yeah, little, 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 little. So one bar as a beat. Uh, 
That's it. Good. That's it. I mean, you can be more subtle later, but that's a great idea. Try with the right hand. Much, much better. Well done. Th this is it. So, you, you, you know, thinking about rhythm and shape in the broader picture, you know, rather than in terms of individual beats in the bar, it's got to be one bar is like one beat, or in this case, two bars is like a beat. Okay, yeah. Good. And then, you know, the texture, you know, I mean, just we're, we're running out of time, but on page 23, because I'd like to hear some of the, uh, some of the, the, the next movement. If you could try page 23, um, you know, um, to think much more about mezzo staccato in the tr crotchets again. It, use lots of pedal, but make the crotchets much softer so that the semi briefs really come out. Again, thinking orchestrally, we don't want the uh, the harp arpeggios to dr be drowning out the, um, the the violin melody. So let's hear some of the um, the second movement, shall we? Very nice. No, I think this will be super. Very, very good. I mean, it's all, um, it's, it's so close to the Greek, isn't it? Unbelievably close. Yeah. You know, I, I think, I mean, it, I mean, the Greek second movement, you know, as, as well, it, it, it yeah. reminds me of that a little bit so much. Well, um, <laughs> well, yeah, good. So, I mean, again, I think you've got to be careful in 9 8 to not get um, uh, too deliberate with all the quavers i mean it's an up that uh, you can breathe in on the three upbeat notes breathe in and then exhale for two bars do you want to just try that okay Much better. I mean, it's a song, isn't it? I mean, make words up to it. Try, try and do that. I mean, that 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 would be give you the tempo, the phrasing, and also it sorts out the balancing because you want your voice, not mine, but your voice, to be heard above everything else. Um, so, 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 have a try again. So that was significantly more flowing, perhaps, than you, because I was thinking of this. Melody night. So let's let's turn it into a you know an, an ode for St Andrews University, if you like. <laughs> have have a go. <laughs> Good. 
But, and then, and then, then that's it. That's, it's wonderful here to change the texture completely. I mean, I mean, sometimes it's very interesting as well. In the 19th century, you know, hairpins would not necessarily only be to do with dynamics, although they can be, but you can think about that as a kind of um, accelerando followed by a ritardando. Tiny, you know, so don't think about it exclusively, just in, because it is a bit weird to get louder there. But it kind of works if you think of it as an accelerando and a ritardando. You know, it's, semant it's semantics. Rhythm and dynamics are much more connected. Rubato and shading and colour and mood. You know, you always think of them as different things. But if you connect the two, it's very interesting. So if you could try, you know, a kind of slight accelerando, like a gust of wind getting up in that on that F sharp to the A, and then it slows down again. Just a very subtle uh, bit of rubato. Have a try. Okay. So... Good, well done, yeah, yeah, lovely, very, very nice, and it's something, you know, I mean, I think that somebody was once, I mean, there's a book written, Secrets of Notation, uh, quite a few years ago, and one of the chapters is asking why there's a duplication with crescendo markings like a hairpin and crescendo written above the top in some of the works of Chopin and some of the works of Schubert, and it could be that it's because you know, you don't necessarily have to think about the hairpins exclusively in terms of dynamics. You can think of them in terms of moving forward, getting more excited and getting more relaxed. Good. And the other thing is with all those repeated Ds, oh, no, 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 make it sound like a sustained cello line, you know, rather than dot, 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 dot. The hardest thing to do on a digital piano, you're doing very well there, but if you can try to... You know, make it sound like a continuous sound, you know. That's right, we're just down an octave, that's it. Yeah, but from that part, that's fine, great. So what we've been spending a lot of time, George, in this lesson is looking at it from the listener's point of view, looking at it from the, con if you were conducting this, if it was an orchestral piece, you know, how would you be really clear in terms of rhythm, in terms of structure, in terms of direction, in terms of colouring, because it's also to do with the melody being bigger and hiding the repeated melody notes and, um, and the accompaniment notes and making the bass sometimes come to the fore. So all very vital questions. And, you know, it's often very good to just play the basics. And, you know, what we did at the beginning, conducting with one hand and playing with the other is very good. But using the metronome a lot. And, and you know, that was quite interesting trying. We, we got, eventually we got to the speed, which was 52, um, which was sort of very odd. semi breathe equals 52 as a tempo. But, you know, that's what, that's kind of, I don't know, if we're thinking of it in two, that's, um, that's, uh, that's sort of minimum equals 104, you know, which is more reasonable, I suppose, very, very quick, but it seems to need that. Otherwise, you lose the sense of um, being able to sing the melodies, don't you? Mm. So interesting, but well, a wonderful choice. And, and I'm sure you'll get that. The second movement is actually much further on than you think it is. You know, it, it just needs a little bit more refining, that's all. So thank you very much, Josh.
Very good. That's some fantastic work you've done there. That's really coming on very well indeed. It's a, it's a terrific piece to learn for all sorts of reasons. I mean, it's exquisite music. But I mean, in terms of um, all the things it gives you um, as a pianist, it's it's remarkable. Um, you know, in terms of um, color and in terms of, of coordination, but also most importantly, in terms of um, imagination and and control. Uh, I mean, even for it's very fast. I'd like you to think that you're always singing. That if you slow down the right hand. It could be like a Chopin Nocturne. So if you think of it as a kind of Chopin Nocturne played four times faster than it should be, you know, that's not a bad thing to do. Um, but having said that, the last page, um, you know, it's it's a sting in the tail, isn't it? Because with you know, it's the, the second theme is totally different from the first, and um, you know, the, the sort of um, um, way that it throws itself away. It almost sounds like the piece is finished before it should finish, doesn't it? You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't try to apologize for that. So if anything, celebrate the fact that it finishes abruptly by actually getting quicker. Dun, 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 boom! And just let it go. Again, I, we were talking a lot in the, the Garda, the Sonata, a minute ago um, with George about um, thinking about a faster tempo, about one bar being a beat. It was very much here as well. So if you take the coda, can you just play the melody, the top tune on its own, single notes on the right hand, da 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 di, da 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 da. So this is bar 251. Just do the melody on its own. Good. Um, but let's go right back to the beginning. Um, yeah. Um, so I mean, what I think you need to do now is to cultivate um, um, much more um, ease and carefree confidence. You know, it's sounding very, very thorough what you've done. You've done, have you practiced a lot? It sounds like you've been practicing hours and hours. <laughs> um, I think I accidentally played it faster than I, I planned. <laughs> no, really, I want you to play even faster, you see. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you can easily get it quicker than that. But have you been playing it a long time? Uh, since like October. Yeah, it's, well, it sounds like you've done some really good work. And what I, I just want it to be absolutely um, fantastically carefree in quality, in, in the, the sound. I don't want to feel that every single note has been worked on. I want you to play with it now and just get it much, much. <laughs> You know, you know, quite skirt sound. Of, I mean, it's interesting. Do you know the other impromptus in this set? Uh, yeah, I've listened to them, but not played them. Yeah, I mean, some people think it's a sonata, that the first movement is like the first movement, and this is like a scherzo, and the, the, the G flat impromptu is like a slow movement, and the last one is like a finale, like a sort of rondo, which is it's not necessarily convincing, the last one, but, but there is an element of truth there. So if this was a scherzo, think about this after all the somberness of the C minor that we've just had. Think of this as being much more like light relief. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it's like the Night Porter and Macbeth or something like that, but, but you know what I mean? There's an element of a, an intermezzo and a, a kind of lighter quality. Um, so... So that would be wonderful if you could try. And I think, you know, I mean, you can do that. All that sort of stuff. I mean, what we were doing with Kenza in the Chopin Fantasy Impromptu, we're talking about dives and having impulses, you know, sort of taking one bar and one kind of impulse. Have you ever done that? Just drop on the G and just get rid of it. Have a try. Very interesting to see what happens. Yeah, very good. Now, can we just make it four times lighter? You know, I'm putting a real diminuendo through it. Good. That's it. So I would. That's one way I would definitely work, and that would be quite fun. Sort of dropping on 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 the dropping on every bar. I think that would be a trip. I mean, I would do a lot of the dynamics in the left hand. And that, that that's interesting. So 
you know, if you try the bar one, um, Sophia, in the left hand is um, piano, and then if you think of bar nine as 40 in the left hand, keep the right hand pretty much the same. You'll be surprised how, what you, try, just try that. Try bar one and keep piano in both hands, hands together, yes, bar one. Yeah, that's it. Maybe bar, just to go into, go to that, yes. Good, now try bar um, nine, but make the left hand much, much bigger, but don't do much different in the right, and you'd be surprised. You can really, if, you, if you really exaggerate the left, that should be enough. That's it. Good. Well, well that, yeah, that's it. It's, so, so that's something to think about, you know. And then the other thing is when we get into these, um, the second thing, that this is from bar 25. This here, with all of these changes in harmony, it's kind of getting rid of the written uters. Um, but feeling that the covers as they change require a different quality. So holding notes on a bit more. Some of them are held. So each one, yes, yeah, so each one of those you can be getting quieter. You know, it's sort of diminuendoing, getting softer, and it's varying the. You know, it's not just playing it all the same. It's kind of having a sense of definitely coming down as well as holding notes on. Yeah, good. And when you get into the B minor section, um, you know, it's it's not so much an accent on the um, um second beat. It's a kind of um, delayed. Up. Oh, this is Ben Marcato, B minor. Can you try making the, yeah, just placing the B, Don't, placing it a little bit later, do it rhythmically rather than making it louder. That's it, that's it. Yeah. So, you know, reacting to the harmonies and, you know, not just having all the same, but actually taking time to show and, uh, and, and savour the the chromatic notes and the differences in colour, and doing it, you know, very subtly, but nonetheless, um, obviously, so that everybody can hear in the back row. That's important. So very good. So we're sort of moving it up another level. Yeah. <laughs> very well done. Very very good responses. Excellent. <laughs>
Very well, good. My word, you've done a lot of excellent work there. Such an amazing piece, very positive piece, isn't it? Why don't we put, hear the second movement and then we can talk about the two together? Uh, so, I mean, I'm writing a lot of things here on my phone furiously. So, so, but, um, but it's lovely to hear. So, second movement, yeah. Very good. Bravo. It's beautiful. It always makes such a wonderful impression, doesn't it, when you hear it? such gorgeous music, you know. So well done. You've done a lot of fantastic work there. Um, so um, first of all, yeah, I mean, I, I remember having a, a, this as a joke, um, looking at all the different ways you can play the opening, you know. And, um, uh, you know, some people play it. Uh, very legato, and you know it sounds very posh, doesn't it? Right, like a member of the royal family. Which, and then that can be set off against that. And I've always instinctively made it very detached. Um, and anyway, I mean, a friend of mine from Russia, Dina Parakina, who knew Shostakovich, she said. Um, Shostakovich said you have to do it detached. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I mean it, it, it doesn't actually matter. You know, we don't all, all have uncles who had friends who knew Beethoven's great great grandson who said that it had to be at a certain tempo. And the music's greater than, than any one thought from the composer anyway. But I do think that the character. Bop, 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 I don't, I don't want to be in Buckingham Palace doing, although some people do. I mean, to me, I mean, one thing that you can do that I think is quite important for later on, think about not moving your head on every beat. We don't play with our head because that's going to really tire you out after a while. And you know, I mean, I mean, it's yeah. I mean, dum 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 dum, bum 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 bum. If you want to get it, you know, have you heard Shostakovich's performance? Yeah, I have. It's he was obviously having a bad day, wasn't he? But it's 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 certainly fast, isn't it? My goodness me, too fast, really. Yeah, I'm not saying to play like that, but I think there has to be more of a dum 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 dum. Bum, 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 but I'm more of a bounce to it, doesn't it? Yeah. So do you want to just try again without moving your head and every, and just give this kind of working class articulation that I've got, you know, in, in sort of working man's pub approach, more of a chance than the than Buckingham Palace for one. And you, doesn't matter, Buckingham Palace is fine. Go back to that later, but try the try the working class version now. See how you get on. Yes, sir. I think I would like you to film yourself after this, and you'll be amazed at how much head moving you're doing. Yeah, very, very important when you're working on your own in lockdown to always use the metronome, because yeah, you know, this is I mean this is motoric in so many ways the piece, and uh, I definitely find keeping the things yeah. Yeah, to just have it on. I mean, and you know, I mean, I think you've got to kind of build up the speed. But I mean, on at least on these digital machines, it gives you a metronome, doesn't it? Yeah. So I mean, if you can, you know, dun, 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 bum, 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 holding that and getting rid of the unnecessary movements would be wonderful. 
Dum, da, 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 bum, bum, ba, da, da. All of these things at figure five, the same kind of, you know, vibrato kind of shivery um, movement from the knuckles downwards. That That's important and building it up like that. You know, I mean, we've been talking a lot today, this afternoon of everybody about um, keyboard dives or single movement gestures for lots of notes. This is, you can build up this as well in the same way. Don't think, oh my goodness me, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight octaves to play. Just think, I've got to catapult onto that first F sharp, and that impetus will, will, will mean that the other notes will play themselves. So, I mean, that's what I would suggest. And I would, I would play the octave, not with my neck, but with my feet. I mean, Ashkenazi was the one that said he plays from his toes in an interview. But he didn't mean he put his foot on the piano. He was meaning that the kind of impetus of doing that. So if you could just play that F sharp, first of all, from your body, double octave, isn't it? Just And can you use the pedal? And I don't want to see your neck involved. I like your neck to be a continuation of your spine. Now try three notes. Yada, da, jump on the F sharp. It worries me that you're looking at the music. Don't look. You know the notes. Yada, da, da. Good, now try it to the C. Good, how did that feel? Easy, easy. It's dead easy. Playing the piano is simple. It's just being a human being that's difficult. And I think the, the, the cadenza, it's just an 18, far too slow. You know, you don't need to, you can do it quicker than that. Da, da, dee, da, 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 dee, da, da, da. That's the speed, yeah? So, I mean, you know, you don't need to try very hard in the second bar of 18. We need a great big attack on that D major chord, but then you can relax after it. It's the kind of um, debris that's flying around after the chord, if you like. You know, that's like a boom, and then all the spray of the metal, the color that comes from it. Do you want to try that? Okay. Um, from bar, from figure 18. Okay. That was good. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you what are you afraid of? You can play this. I'm sure you can do it. Double the speed if you want. You know, I, I don't think it's an issue. I think you just got to have um, a little more of a rethink and, and, and realize. And you see the cadenza. I mean, it's not a terribly serious piece. This, you know, don't make a meal of it. You know, if you make a meal of it, it will sound, you know, um, overwritten. But yum. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it, you know, much more um, uh, nimbly and skirt sandal like Can you have a try from 90? Yum! Have a go. Yum! Two, three, four. <laughs> and, and these upbeats just go to the last note. Okay, have a go. Good. That's it. Again, an awful lot of neck playing, but have a look at it later. Film yourself and you'll see what I mean. So, so lots of promise here. You know, I think that you're much, much better than you think you are. You know, as a pianist, I think you've got. To, I think you're being far too modest. I think it's going to be a great performance, but I think it's just ready to kind of um, take off now. And you need to kind of, um, you know, unleash your. Um, get the lead taken off and get be unleashed and explore, you know, the possibilities of energy from um, less effort, from simply knowing which notes in the piece are the pivotal ones to um, catapult from or bounce from or to focus on, to aim for. And then everything else comes out in a much more kind of um, sparkling way because you're not trying so hard. So releasing the... Um, Releasing the, the notes from pivot points, really, really important. Uh, but I think very, very good.